So in a story reminiscent of Indiana Jones's flight across the Sahara, UCD man Nizar Abraham is just back from Morocco where he's made a most wonderful discovery. Nizar, would you like to just describe what you've been up to over the past month? We've spent about four weeks searching for fossils of dinosaurs and other extinct animals that lived in the Cretaceous period in this part of the Sahara Desert. Where did you start out from? Well, I flew via Germany to Morocco. Yeah. And then we all met in Casablanca and bought a few supplies in Casablanca. Then we drove through Marrakech, Wurzazat, and then straight into the uh, Sahara Desert, into a region that is called the Kem Kem. So you headed off to Casablanca, and who was in the expedition team? Well, a number of people helped me on this expedition. There were uh, four scientists from the University of Portsmouth in England, and also scientists from the University Hassan II in Casablanca in Morocco. So this is a collaboration that I have uh, started with Moroccan scientists um, quite a while ago. So you set up your first camp, and then, I gather, you make your first discovery. Yes, our first major discovery um, were dinosaur footprints. We found a sediment layer that uh, preserved dozens of dinosaur footprints, uh, some of them very large, some of them recording several animals walking along the same trail. And uh, we can sometimes even see one uh, animal uh, walking. Uh, so we can measure the stride length of the animal, and actually. Uh, deduce things like the speed at which it walked and so on. Okay, so talk us through the actual moment of discovery. So, so you've picked the spot, yeah. you're out of the Land Rovers, you've looked at the landscape, you've decided this is the place to look for this dinosaur. Were you looking for a particular dinosaur? Well, not really. I think you can't be that picky because it's quite difficult to find good dinosaur fossils in this part of Africa. So this was a part of the Sahara that I hadn't really explored um, on my previous expeditions. So I said to my colleagues that I would like to go to this place. And uh, we set up camp, and we had to walk for about an hour and a half to reach the outcrops. And after about 10 minutes, uh, I spotted two small uh, pieces of bone. And one led me to a pile of small fragments of bone. Um, so there was a bone that had been exposed for quite a long time and just... Um, just uh, exploded, basically. And the other one was a piece of bone that actually um, went further into the rock. And we started excavating it, and it was about 15 centimeters long at first, then 25, then it was uh, almost a meter long. And after a while, we realized that uh, we were dealing with a bone of a very large plant-eating dinosaur called a sauropod. Okay, so you excavate this enormous area around the bone, and then... You can't just lift it out, presumably. You have to be very careful in terms of how you, how you actually handle or transport the bone. Absolutely. Uh, we faced a number of challenges. Um, first of all, the bone was very heavy. It was also very fragile. So to transport a bone like this, you actually have to put it into a plaster jacket. But we didn't have enough plaster. We didn't even have enough water. So uh, my colleague Dave Matilla and myself drove uh, through the desert at night uh, to reach a small town on the edge of the desert where we bought plaster and water. And then we returned and started putting plaster on the bone, but the plaster wouldn't set. So we started making fires around the bone to just create some heat. You know, we tried everything we could. Um, and after that, of course, we had to get the bone into the Land Rover. So we tried to get the Land Rover as close as possible to the field site, which unfortunately was on a mountain. So we had to transport the bone down the mountain. So we had to um, move thousands of rocks and, and stones to create a path, a safe path, to actually carry the bone down the mountain. So it's like the bone is on a stretcher almost. Yes, yes. We used everything we had. We had, we had two wooden planks. We had ropes, um, strings, and we just put everything around the bone. And four people had to lift the bone. It was very heavy, yes. as expected. But uh, we managed to uh, carry it down the mountain. Uh, without any major problems, and we got it in the Land Rover. It just about fits. And uh, after that, the Land Rover was so heavy that it kept sinking into the sand. So quite often, we all had to get out of the car and just let the driver maneuver um, 
you know, the, the, the car around the sand dunes. But we got back onto the tarmac and we thought it was all over, but then we still got caught in a snowstorm on our way back as well. Okay, so you're driving through the snow with this wonderful bone in the back of the Land Rover. So you must have felt very excited at this point in terms of the discovery you'd actually oh, Absolutely, made. absolutely. I was very excited about it, but I was also very worried about the bone <laughs> because um, uh, we were not quite sure whether it would actually uh, survive this transport um, because, as I said, it is quite fragile, but uh, it has safely arrived in Europe and will arrive in Dublin in January. So that's going to be a very exciting day for me. Great. So, so the bone arrives, and your colleagues from Portsmouth presumably would like will will come along too. So they'll arrive in Dublin, and then what will you do with with it? Well, we'll get it out of the plaster jacket, and uh, then for the very first time, we'll actually be able to see what the bone looks like in 3D. And uh, then the first thing I will do is. Uh, take more measurements and compare this bone to uh, bones of other sauropod dinosaurs. Some bones in a vertebrate skeleton are very distinctive and you can actually use them to say, you know, what family the animal belonged to and so on. And basically what I will do is look at uh, ratios of different measurements of the bone and compare these to measurements of other sauropod dinosaur bones. And they all differ in small details. You know, a small bump on the bone might have a different shape in, in one animal. Um, and our bone looks very different from uh, sauropod bones that I've seen so far. It's very um, bulky. It's very um, heavy. And this was probably a very heavily built animal, uh, an animal that probably belonged to a type of dinosaur that we call titanosaur. These weren't the only discoveries you made in this part of Morocco. I was particularly excited that we found a new type of pterosaur, that's a flying reptile. Um, and these were amazing animals, and some of them had a wingspan of over 10 meters. Uh, we don't know very much about pterosaurs from Africa, uh, only two or three um, finds that are worth mentioning. So on my last expedition in April, I found little fragments of the beak of a pterosaur, which was very exciting, but the fragments were not really diagnostic. I couldn't actually erect a new, new species based on these remains. Um, so I thought, well, maybe on my next expedition I'll find more material of this animal. And unbelievably, I actually did. Um, we found more beak fragments. Uh, we found a vertebra as well. And I think now we have enough material to actually identify this as a new type of flying reptile from Africa. Any significance in that it was the beak of the pterosaur that you found? Yes, I think so. Um, the thing about pterosaurs is that their skeletons are very light and uh, very fragile. So uh, pterosaur skeletons uh, are not the kind of skeletons that, actually, uh, that are actually well preserved in the sediments. So I think that we keep finding beak fragments because the beak is probably one of the tougher uh, parts of the body. People's general image of the Sahara is of rolling sand dunes, but I gather that the part you were in for this discovery was actually quite different. Uh, yes, it was. Um, first of all, this part of the Sahara is actually quite rocky. Uh, about 60% of the Sahara is, in fact, uh, rocky, not that sandy. Um, but this place looked very, very, very different um, in the Cretaceous. Uh, it was a lush green paradise, with a, a deltaic river system, maybe, or possibly even just one huge river uh, with lots of crocodiles, turtles, lizards, and indeed dinosaurs. So a very different place from the Sahara today.